Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. And I'm Brian. And this is 3B Farm and Homestead here in... Upstate New York. Beautiful upstate New York. The land of taxes. Okay, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Beautiful upstate New York. Yes, we are heavily taxed. Uh, and that isn't so great. But the land is beautiful, and uh, we do love it here in upstate New York. But we're not talking taxes today on this episode of 3B TV. We are going to be talking about... Chickens. Chickens, absolutely. We're, in fact, going to be talking about the breeds of chicken that we're going to be getting on our homestead here in 2018. But before we do that... Let's talk a little bit about some of the breeds that we're not going to be getting on our homestead here in 2018. And in particular, there are two breeds that we tried this year that we're not going to be doing again. And then there's another breed that we've had for, uh, for several years. We're not going to be getting them again either. So let's just start with the two breeds that we tried this year that we're not going to be getting. The first one is the Black Osterlorp. Why not? Well... They were a great egg layer, but I found them to be extremely boring to look at. So, Brian found the Black Ocelorp not to be as visually appealing as some other breeds that we've had in the past. And probably personality-wise, they were just a little bit boring. They really yeah. weren't friendly. They weren't they were aggressive. They were just... They're, they're not... I don't know. For us, they just didn't have... A they, great personality. But they weren't skittish. That was a good thing, though. No, they are a relatively um, calm bird, docile bird. We, we really like that. But, um, I don't know. They just, for us, personality-wise, they were just eh. But I think the biggest reason why I'm not wanting to get the Black Australorp this year is because one of the reasons why we got them is because I had heard that having the Black uh, Australorp in your flock could help with predation issues, in particular hawks. And that didn't happen. No. We ended up losing a couple of birds to hawks this year. Um, and so, really the main reason of trying out the black ostelorp, well, it just didn't, it didn't work out. No, it didn't. Um, the second breed that we're not going to be um, having this year on our homestead is the Rhode Island Red. Um, why didn't you like the Rhode Island Red? On the little pamphlet that we got last year on the chicken, you know, where it talks about the chicken, it said calm and docile. They were anything but that. I can not recall how many times they pecked me or scratched me with, like, yeah. They were aggressive towards me, and they are boring to look at, and they are one of my least favorite birds. So yeah, we didn't really have a good um, experience with the Rhode Island Red. I don't know if it was just the strain that we got, um, but they were a little bit more aggressive than other birds that we've had in the past. And, well, they're a good, a fairly good egg layer. Probably yeah. not as good as the Australorps. No. Um, but they're a, a good egg layer. But um, we just didn't really care for their temperament. And so with all of the gazillion varieties of chickens... Uh, that we can try. Um, we're not going to return Rhode Island Reds to the flock this year. Never. Well, never is a long time, but yeah. at least not this year. <laughs> um, the third breed is a breed that we have, we've raised for a number of years. I'd say about four. And just not had good luck with it. We've tried and we've tried and we've tried, and it just hasn't worked out well for us. What's that? That is the Easter Egger. I love that bird to pieces. It is the most beautiful chicken I have ever seen. They're puffy little cheeks. They're so fancy looking. But... And their eggs are pretty oh, too. Oh, yeah. They're like this beautiful greenish, at least the ones that we've had. But they always seem to die on us. We don't know what we've been doing wrong. We don't know if it's just the bird. They're not very hardy. But it just seems like we would order about 5 to 10, and only 2 would come out and live. Yeah, we just haven't had a good, re um, the track record of, of raising Easter eggers for us hasn't been great. Um, they just don't seem to be as hardy of, of a bird as, as the others. And so this year we have elected um, not to, to return them to our flock. 
Besides that, they aren't really a prolific egg layer, which because of the other ones that we have that are prolific egg layers, we've been willing to have the um, Easter eggers in our flock just because while they might only lay an egg every other day, it, that, that level of color is very beautiful in the array of eggs that we have. They're also cute little birds. And, and they, are, they are a pretty bird. They really are. Just the, the, the tufts of, um, of feathers around their necks is, is, is very cute. But the fact that we just have not had good luck with them as far as, as thriving has caused us to rethink it. And so this year, we are going to skip um, the Easter Egger and we are going to uh, replace it with um, another bird. Hey, maybe we'll do it next year. Maybe we'll Who try knows? it again. Maybe we'll try it again in, in, a, in a few years. And the thing is, is this has been something where we have, we have bought the Easter Egger from... Man, multiple sources. I don't think we've ever purchased it from the same source. No. We, we've tried, if we've had it four years, we've probably tried four different hatcheries and just not had good success with it. We might have one or two of them that, that make it um, and, and the other ones don't. And it's not like we lose a lot of birds. No. We, we, we don't. Um, our, our chickens are generally very healthy and, and they generally thrive. Brian J makes makes sure of that. <laughs> yeah, he's kind. Of, he he manages our flock and and does very well at it. Um, but for Wait. some reason, the Easter Egger just has not thrived on our homestead. And so this year, the Easter Eggers are the odd man out. So having said that, Rhode Island Red's not in, Black Australorp's not in, and the Easter Egger is out. So what are we going to get on our homestead this year? Well. Number one is Brian's all-time favorite, which is the... Leghorn. The Leghorn. Now, honestly, it's not one of my favorites uh, for a number of reasons. Generally speaking, the Leghorn's a little bit more skittish. Uh, the Leghorn's are a smaller body, so when we dress them off in the fall, there's not as much meat that we're cooking up. But Brian absolutely loves the Leghorn. Why do you love the Leghorn? Well, from a practical perspective, they are a great egg layer. So you, they'll lay about the average one every day. And when I was young, the first time when my great grandfather had chickens, the first chickens I remember him having were the Lagerns. And now I think he died about five years ago. Yep. Yeah. And so they're kind of like a little special memory to me, and they always bring back those fun memories of my great grandfather and his chickens. Absolutely. And, well, I, like I said, I, they're not exactly my favorite bird. They have, to a certain extent, grown on me, I'll have to admit. Because for some reason, they're, they're, they, they, unlike the other birds, which the other, the other breeds that we have are, are heavier breeds, these guys like to fly and they can get out of their run. And so there's a couple of them that in the mornings... When I'm out feeding the pigs, will kind of follow me around a little bit, and I do have to admit they've kind of grown on me. They a are bit. so adorable when they do that. Like they're so. When I come up, or he comes up with a little blue bucket, or I come in with a water jug, they'll think they'll run up to us and they'll think that we're giving them food. It's so cute. So that's number one. The second one is my favorite and my wife's favorite, and that is. The Buff Warpington. The Buff Warpington. I absolutely favorite. love the Buff Warpington. To They're me, a great bird. when you when the sunlight hits a Buff Warpington, I'm not sure there's a prettier chicken out there. When it, when the sunlight hits a Buff Warpington just right, they just glow, and uh, they're just absolutely a beautiful bird. But they've got an awesome temperament. Oh, they do. Yes. yes they indeed. they are sweet little chickens, and they'll come up to you and everything after a while. <laughs> yeah, they they just got a great temperament. Um, they'll go broody for you. The, um, Although sometimes that kind of gets out of hand. Yeah, sometimes that can be a bit of a pain in the butt. But if you're wanting to hatch eggs out naturally, a Buff Orpington is a great breed to have. We've done that in the past. Um, they're a great egg layer. Um, although the color of their egg is... Standard. It's kind of boring. It's, it's just a beige color. Um, so you don't get the, the color of the, the Cuckoo Marin or the, uh, of course, the, the speckles of a Well Summer or the... Um, the, the colors that you would get from the Easter egg. But they lay well. But they lay very well. 
And um, so the buff Orpington is a is a chicken that as long as I have my way, we will always have buffs in our flock. We'll never get rid of them. And they are a great chicken to start off on if you're thinking about starting your own flock. It's great. Absolutely. Great beginner chicken. Um, I just absolutely love buff Orpingtons. We've had great success with them. In fact, one year, that's all we had. We had straight buff Orpingtons. Two years. Actually, I think you're right. Two years. In fact, you're right because the first year we had straight buff Orpingtons, and then the second year we actually hatched out a bunch of chickens, um, and, uh, and and that was all. They were all buff Orpingtons. So, yeah. Yep. So uh, buff Orpingtons number two. So the third variety of chicken that we're going to get this year is the silver laced wine dot. And what are some of the reasons why we're going to get the silver laced wine dot? Oh, well, they're a good egg layer. They have a bit of meat on their bones, and they're just gosh darn good looking. They are. They are a pretty looking so bird. <laughs> it sounded so southern. Good gosh darn good looking. No, they are. They are a very, very beautiful bird. This isn't going to be the first time that we've had the silver laced wine dot on our farm, um, but it's going to be the first time that we've specifically ordered the silver laced wine dot. Well, that's tongue a tough. Twister. That's a tongue, tongue twister, twister of a bird so that to say. Ten times fast. Uh, absolutely, but. We're looking forward to, to having uh, a number of them on, uh, on our farm this year. Again, as he said, beautiful bird, um, a good egg layer, and they are also do put on um, a, a good amount of, of meat. So they'll, at full size, will be between five and seven pounds. So not only are we going to be getting the silver laced wind up pullets, but this year we are going to be doing the silver laced wind up for our rooster. You don't have to have a rooster for the hens to lay eggs. But if you want to hatch out chicks, you do have to have a rooster. Now, we don't plan on uh, hatching out any chicks, but we just like having a rooster around. Yeah. And generally speaking, our roosters have been buff Orpingtons, and you've liked them. I've loved them. Uh, the year before last, we decided to, instead of getting a buff Orpington rooster, to get a barred rock rooster. And that was a disaster. Well, I don't know if it was a total disaster. Because In my we, eyes, it was. Well, what did he earn you at the fair? He got me a purple ribbon. The first purple ribbon that we've ever earned at the fair, and that was at Bard Rock Rooster. He was a beautiful, beautiful bird, and he started out rather calm, and I've got some pictures of Brian Jay carrying him around. He was a friendly bird, but then for some reason, and I don't know why, what happened, but he did become... Mean. He became mean and aggressive. And so, eventually, he ended up in the stew pot. In the stew pot. Uh, and so this year we got ourselves another buff orpington rooster. And he's really been a good bird. And you got yourself another? Purple ribbon. Another purple ribbon with that rooster. But one of the problems that we've had with our roosters is that when we winter them over, the single comb roosters just get a lot of... Frostbite. Yep. They just get frostbite really bad. And... I'm not sure why. It doesn't seem like it affects the hens, but those roosters with those single combs um, really get uh, just a, a bad case of frostbite. So this year, what we're going to do is for our rooster, we are going to get a silver laced wind out rooster. Why? Well, it has a peat comb first off, so that probably has a higher chance of not getting frostbite. And it says in the description that it's common docile, so I hope it will be. <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping that it will be uh, a nice rooster to have around. They are a very, very pretty bird, and um, so very excited to try them out. I don't believe we've ever had a uh, silver lace wind out rooster, and so excited to try them out. So the next breed that we're going to talk about is the... Sapphire Gem. The Sapphire Gem is a breed that comes, I believe, from the Czech Republic, and this is a breed that... I, I really had never heard of till we saw it in the Hoover catalog. And um, it was something that really appealed to us for a number of reasons. What are those reasons? Well, it's a hardy bird, and it's a good egg layer, I do believe, as I read. And it has the most beautiful feathers, according to the industry. They're called blue and lavender feathers. So, again, we've never tried this breed before. I've never seen this breed before that I know of. But according to what we've read, it is an, a, a very good egg layer about 290 eggs a year um, it will lay, as well as uh, just being a beautiful bird. The uh, As Brian said, the coloring is referred to as blue or lavender. It's a grayish color. 
And they also do dress out fairly well. It, it says that the females get to about six pounds and the males to about seven pounds. Pretty good. And so we feel like that will um, be a great addition to our flock, both from an egg laying perspective as well as when we go to dress them off and uh, they'll, they'll provide a fair, about, um, a fair amount of meat for us. The next breed that we're going to be getting is, um, is one that I'm, I'm pretty excited about, and it is the... Delaware. Now, the Delaware is a dual-purpose bird. It, is, um, it, it can actually get to be fairly large. Males can dress out at about 8.5 pounds, and females at about 6.5 pounds. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on this, but if I'm not mistaken, a lot of Cornish crosses, and maybe all of the Cornish crosses, have some Delaware in them. Now, I could be wrong on that. Don't hold me to that. But um, I do believe that is the source of some of the genetics for Cornish crosses. Probably the white feathers. What are some of the things about the Delaware that, um, besides the, the fact that they're a dual-purpose bird, that kind of drew us to them? Well, first of all, my dad thought they were pretty. I also do think that, too. I'm not as excited as he is. But they uh, they lay well. I'm sure they have a good bit of meat to them. And I think they're pretty hardy, too. Yeah, they're a, they're a hardy bird. And um, they do have a reputation of being calm and docile. So um, we hope that they will live up to the reputation better than the uh, Rhode Island Reds did. That was a complete overstatement. Yeah. Common docile my foot. <laughs> so the next breed that we're going to talk about is the black sex link. The black sex link. Now, so a black sex link, well, it's a hybrid bird between what? A barbed rock hen and a what? I don't Rhode know. Island red. Rhode Island red cockerel. So it has the temperament of what? A barred rock. A barred rock, that's right. We've had barred rocks before and we really, really like them from a temperament perspective. We believe that we might have had some black sex links that we acquired in one of those Heinz 57 variety packs. And we really like them. I and, love them. And so we're looking forward to specifically getting some black sex links this year and, uh, and seeing if that's what we had. And um, if so, then we know we'll be very happy with them. They definitely are a pretty bird. They kind of have the reddish head and then a black body. And they have a green tint when the sun shines on them. Um, that's right. And when the sun hits them right way, the right way, if they're the breed that we, we think they are, they have this greenish tint to their feathers. And uh, just a very, very pretty bird. So uh, we're going to give them a try and uh, see if that's what we think they are. And if so, we believe we'll be very happy with them. Well, we will be happy with them. <laughs> The last breed uh, of layers that we're going to be getting this year is the Well Summer. And this is one that Brian's not too happy about. Why aren't you happy about this? Well, one, they're skittish. And two, I find them to be ugly. Just the color of their feathers reminds me of an old shag carpet. On the other hand, I disagree. I think that they're a pretty bird. And they are a little bit more skittish than some of the other breeds that we're talking about. But the thing I love about the Well Summers is their eggs. What do their eggs look like? They're brown with black speckles. Well, I wouldn't call them black speckles, but they're a speckled egg. Brownish, brownish speckles. Brownish speckles. And, speckles. And I really, we had them last year, we didn't get them this year, and I really, really have missed those eggs in the carton. I really enjoyed having that contrast on um, having those speckled eggs in the in the carton. And so looking forward this year to returning well summers to our flock, even though Brian's not exactly thrilled about it. But I'll suck it up. He's gonna suck it up because we kind of made a trade-off. He's getting the black sex links, I'm getting the well summers, and everybody's happy, right? Right. Right. <laughs> At least for now. So folks, those are the varieties that we are going to have on our homestead this year. We are going to have the Lager, the Buff Orpington, the Silver Laced Wine Dot, Tongue the, Twister, uh, the Silver Laced Wine Dot, <laughs> the Delaware, the Black Sex Link, the Sapphire Gem, and the Well Summer. Those are the seven breeds that we're going to be getting on our homestead. What are you going to be getting this year? Have you tried any of these breeds? And what did you like about them? What didn't you like about them? 
Um, do you think that we're crazy for not uh, getting the uh, Easter egg this year? And uh, do you think we were a little too hasty on pushing out the Austra Black Australorp and the Rhode Island Red? Let us know what your thoughts are. Not on the Rhode Island Red. We're not doing you, you are not a fan of the Rhode Island I am Island. not a fan. Not a fan of the Rhode Island Red. Uh, the Rhode Island Red will not become a, a favored uh, chicken not. breed here on 3B Farm and Homestead. It will never be a part of our family. Well, that was a long time. It is a very long time indeed. But, no, Brian was definitely not a fan of the Rhode Island Red. So, so thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been another episode of 3B TV. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like, share. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Till next time, thanks so much. We'll catch you later.